We just do what we gotta do. Okay, really good. It happens more frequently than it should. Today I'm joined by Ruben who is my six week old and he's showing us the Easter outfit that I made him. If this is your first time here on my channel then welcome. My name is Marie and on this channel I'd love to motivate mums to make and mend. Today's making project is a pair of bloomer shorts with some detachable suspenders and a bow tie attached to a dribble bib. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing this tutorial today. It's not really a tutorial in the sense of it being a pattern for you to follow, more it's just watching as I work things out and how I put this together. This video is also in collaboration with Jenny Masterson. She has a wonderful DIY craft and sewing channel here on YouTube and I'm really excited to get to share her with you today. So we're going to watch a bit of a clip so that Jenny can explain a bit more about herself and her channel. Hi, I'm Jenny and I would love for you to come and join me on my channel after you're done watching Marie's video to watch me sew an Easter dress for my daughter, Violet. On my channel, I share lots of sewing projects, DIYs and crafts. I'm a very ambitious sewer and I love to create things out of the norm. I love to DIY just about anything I can, even if I probably shouldn't. <laughs> I really hope you come and join me on my channel to watch me make Violet's dress. Enjoy Marie's video! So after you finish watching this video, I'd love for you to click the link down below in my description box so that you can go to Jenny's channel and watch her video as she's making Violet's Easter dress. This outfit for Reuben I think is perfect for our autumn weather here in Australia, but I'm really curious, what's the weather like at Easter time where you live? Let me know in the comments down below. So with all of that being said, and before Reuben gets a little bit too restless, let's get into the video. So let's get making. Mama makes an Easter outfit. This is the fabric that I have picked to make the outfit from. It's this really cute striped fabric with blue and white stripes and it's got a lovely stretch to it. It's nice and soft and it's also not see-through which is always a good thing to check when you're using a stretchy fabric that when it stretches that it's not too see-through. I think that this muted kind of pastely blue colour will look really nice for Easter and I know our older son Elijah is looking forward to having a pair of shorts out of this same fabric so that he can match his little brother which is really cute. So of the four elements of this outfit we're going to start with making the bloomer shorts. I've previously made some for Reuben like this and they still do fit him although I find that because he wears cloth nappies the back of the shorts could do with being a little bit higher so that they can kind of cover over his big cloth nappy bottom a little bit better and same between the legs here because between his legs with a cloth nappy is is a little bit wider than a disposable nappy I wouldn't mind for this bottom part here to be a little wider between his legs the pattern I used is this one here it's the Bettina Ray free bloomer shorts pattern so I'll link that one for you below I have printed it again and I have drawn out a bit of an extended part here on the back and I've extended the legs here as well. So with those modifications I'm hoping that this will be a better size to fit over his bottom so we'll see how that goes. So with this pattern here and my fabric here and the measurements of the elastic that I used on my previous pair of shorts we're now ready to start making our bloomers. When making clothing from a stretchy fabric make sure that the stretch is going across your garment. We're going to cut out two of our shorts pattern, one for the front and one for the back, and we're going to sew them together down the legs. Whoop. No, 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 no. I need a... a stretch stitch. After sewing down the leg seams, we're going to then attach both the legs together. So I'm putting one leg of the pants inside out and then putting that face down on the other leg of the pants. Then I'm matching up the leg seams and then pinning the rest of the way around so that I'm able to sew the two legs of the pants together. I've set my machine up to be on a stretch stitch which looks like a little lightning bolt but if you don't have that on your machine just do a very narrow zigzag stitch and it will work just fine. You also will need a stretch or ballpoint needle in your machine when you are working with stretchy fabrics like this. Next, we're going to make the casing around each of the legs so that we're able to thread the elastic through. Unlike when using a woven fabric, I'm not needing to fold this over twice in order to hem it. If you are using a woven fabric to make these shorts, you would want to turn it over twice before sewing it down so that it doesn't fray. But because a knit fabric like this isn't going to fray, I'm going to just fold it up one time and sew along it using my stretch stitch. 
I'm sewing most of the way around the casing, but leaving a small opening so that I'm able to thread my elastic through. I'm using six millimeter elastic, which I think is quarter inch elastic if you go by inches. And I'm attaching the end of it to a safety pin and threading it through the hole that I left in the casing, out the other side, and then sewing the edges together. I'm using a zigzag stitch to attach the two ends of my elastic to each other. And then once they are attached and placed inside the casing, I'm using my stretch stitch again to close over the hole in the leg. Before I finish off the waistband for the bloomers, I'm going to put some little buttonholes in the waistband as well. And that's how I'm going to attach the suspenders on. I've previously made this pair of suspenders here, which were part of Elijah's Christmas outfit. Elijah is our four year old and I use these little suspender clips on the end to attach them to his pants. But I'm not wanting to use these on Reuben because babies lie down a lot and I don't think it would be very comfortable to be lying on this piece of metal. So I'm going to use some very tiny flat little buttons instead in order to attach his suspenders to his pants. I thought that sewing them with buttons would make them an easy way to be detachable so that you can wear the shorts separately from the suspenders but also once the suspenders are on him they're not going to be bothering him with these kind of clips against his skin or when he's trying to lie down. So that's my solution. I've not tried it before. This is all a bit of an experiment. So you'll be coming along with me to see whether all that works. But the idea is that the buttons will be on the actual suspender part and the button holes will be on the inside of the shorts. So uh, let's see if we can get that to work. I tried the shorts on Ruben so that I could work out where I wanted the waistband to be. And then I used a contrasting colored thread to hand sew a basting stitch around where I wanted that waistband to be to mark it off ready for me to sew the button holes on. I wanted the buttonholes to be on the inside of the shorts, so I needed them to be above where the top line of the casing was. After finishing my basting stitch, I was able to take off the pins and unfold the hem and know that it was still marked where I wanted that hem to go for the waistband. But with it unfolded, I was able to then put the buttonholes in. I have a buttonhole foot on my sewing machine, which is able to make custom buttonholes to the size button that you have. You can manually make buttonholes though, if you don't have the button foot. To split your buttonhole open, my mum always taught me to insert your seam ripper in one side of the button and cut to the centre of the buttonhole, and then insert your seam ripper in the other side of the buttonhole and cut to the centre again. This way you're not cutting all the way through the buttonhole and risking going too far and cutting your stitches. Then I just checked to make sure that my buttons fit within the buttonhole. I made two buttonholes on the front of the shorts and two on the back, and then I was ready to fold the top down to make the casing for the elastic. I'm folding the top down so that the buttonholes are on the inside of the shorts and I needed to cut off some of the excess at the top of the shorts because I wasn't folding it under twice as I mentioned this being a stretch fabric. I folded it over once, pinned it in place and then sewed around it with a stretch stitch the same way that I did when I was making the casing around the legs. I thought I was being clever and I sewed the whole way around the casing thinking I'll just thread the elastic through one of the buttonholes but that turned out to be kind of more complicated than I thought it would be because the elastic was a little bit too wide for the buttonhole. I made it work, but wouldn't recommend. Then as I did with the elastic on the leg of the pants, I zigzag stitched the elastic to itself and then I poked it back in the casing. With the shorts all done, I'll now show you how I made the suspenders. I cut out two long strips of my fabric making sure that the stretch of my fabric was going along the length of the suspenders. This is so that the stretch of the suspenders will help to keep it on his shoulders without slipping off. I then folded each suspender strap in half widthwise and sewed down the side of it to make each of them into a tube. I cut off the excess seam allowance so it wouldn't be so bulky on the inside. Then I turned the tubes in the right way and ironed them so that the seam was in the centre back. Once they were ironed flat, I then closed off one side of the tube by folding it in on itself and sewing a straight stitch along the end of it. I then hand sewed a button on the end of each of the suspender straps, but not on both sides. I left the other side of my suspender strap long until I tried it on Reuben to see how long each of the suspender straps needed to be. While the suspenders were on Reuben, the two things I needed to check were how long to make the straps so that they connected to the buttonholes that I've made on the back and also to mark the point where they crossed over each other on the back so that I could safety pin it together at that point ready for me to sew it together so that the suspender straps couldn't separate. You'll want to stretch the suspenders a little bit as you're testing out how long to make the straps because having them slightly stretched is what will keep them on their shoulders better. 
So keep that in mind when you're cutting how long you want the suspender straps to be. I sewed a diamond shape over the point where the suspenders crossed to keep them from separating. Then to finish off the raw ends of the suspender straps, I folded them inside the casing and sewed a straight stitch along the edge. And then I hand sewed the buttons to finish off both of these back sides of the suspender straps. So with all four buttons sewn on, the suspenders and the shorts were complete, so I could button them together ready to try on. The last two parts of this outfit are the bow tie and the bib, and the bow tie is going to be attached to the bib. And the reason I wanted to do it that way is because I didn't think it was very safe to have like a strap of a bow tie around a baby's neck and a bib is a little bit safer but also just because a bib is very practical especially with a baby like Reuben who just chucks up all the time so it's a bit of a fashion meets function moment where the bow tie is already attached to the bib I'm going to be using this bandana bib pattern that I've just drafted just tracing out a bandana bib we already had I'm going to cut it on the fold and use this as our template to make the bib shape and I'm going to be making it just out of this white swaddle blanket that we don't need to use because we have so many swaddle blankets as I'm sure you know from previous videos where I've chopped up swaddle blankets. This swaddle blanket being just plain white, I think it will look nice against the stripes and he can wear a white shirt underneath it. And for the bow tie, I'll write in the description box down below the dimensions that I used to make the bow tie in case you're wanting to make one as well. There are a couple of layers to my dribble bib. I had an absorbent middle, a water repelling backing, and then I had this textured swaddle blanket to use as the top. I also cut out the two rectangles I needed for the bow tie. They are slightly different sizes, and you need two of them in order to make a double layered bow tie. I set those pieces aside and started by first making the pretend strap that was meant to look like it was going around Ruben's neck as if it was part of the bow tie. Something like that. We'll see. So as you can tell, I'm just kind of making it up. But I tried it on Reuben first and I realized that it wasn't quite the right shape. So I adjusted the shape of the bib before I then pinned on those long straps, the pretend ties, and I sewed a straight stitch along the bottom edge. Then I folded the strap down on itself, pinned it in place and top stitched along that bottom edge again to create a completed tie with no raw edges exposed. Now moving on to the bow part of the actual bow tie. I folded both of the rectangles in half widthwise and sewed down the longest edge. Then I flipped them out the right way so that the seam was down the center back. Then I folded the two short edges so that they met in the middle and I zigzag stitched along the middle to keep them in place. I repeated that step with both of the ties and then placed them on top of each other, matching up those center zigzag stitches and sewed another row of zigzag stitches to attach both of the ties to each other. I cut a small strip of fabric to wrap around the center of the bow and I hand sewed it at the back, wrapped it around the front and then hand sewed the back part on to keep it in place. I wasn't able to attach the bow to the bib until the very end because it would have gotten in the way of stitching around the edge of the bib. I then tried it on Reuben one last time to check it fit before sewing the front and back of the bib together. You're not gonna watch what I'm doing anyway. I'm just gonna watch him. I get it, it's fine. I'm not offended, I understand. I needed to give the bib one last trim before I was happy with the size of it and then I was ready to sew it together. To do this, I put the front side of the bib face down on the back of the bib and I sew a stitch around the outside of the bib, leaving a gap so that I'm able to turn it in the right way once I'm done. If you're needing a bit more instructions about how to sew a dribble bib, I'll leave my dribble bib video linked in the description box. The next step was to use my pinking shears to cut off any of the excess hem allowance, especially on the curved parts. If you don't have pinking shears, you can just clip little notches, especially in the parts that are curved along the hemline. To close over the hole that we left from turning the bib in the right way, we're going to top stitch along the whole edge of the bib. This will close over the hole, but also make the rest of the bib flat. I threaded a hand sewing needle so that I was able to sew the bow in place. I would recommend sewing the bow a little lower on the bib because it was in the way of Reuben's chin. So for future reference, I would slant the angle of the straps down a little bit so that the actual bow wasn't sitting right up against his chin. Then the only thing left to do is to sew on our closure. I have chosen to use Velcro, but you might choose to use snaps if that's your preference. So here is what our outfit looks like. The bib with the bow tie attached and our completed bloomers with the detachable suspenders. And here's what it looks like on Reuben. So there you have it. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching as I made Ruben's Easter outfit. I'm glad that I bothered making it a dribble bib because we've already put it to good use while we've been sitting here for the past only five minutes. He's running out of puff over here, so let's make this really quick. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to come back and watch some of my future videos. The next video on my channel will be making a baby car seat cover, and I'll be sharing my top tips for using stretch fabrics in that video. So I think it will be a great video all around if you ever have wanted to sew with stretch fabrics but just don't know where to start. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to press like and also look down in the description box below to go and click the link to go and watch Jenny's video where she made Violet's Easter dress. I'd love for you to watch her video next. So I think it's time for me to go put Reuben down for his nap. So until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later.